Hello, loves. My name is Katya, and I'm back to you from Ukrainian countryside. Today is the 20th day of war. If you have met me before, you probably have noticed that my voice is my biggest power and my best weapon and my most magical way of expressing myself. I tried to keep a diary since the war started and then I quit and every single day until today I've been thinking to record this video for you. I don't think you need news. You have seen many bloody photos. You have seen how my land has been raped, how there has been a genocide against Ukrainian nation in the 21st century, in 2022. You have seen the children and animals who have been killed. You have seen the refugees in Europe. And you have seen the kindness of the world. And I'm sure you're one of the people who have been so kind. And I am very, very grateful that you are supporting my country today. But that's not what I want to talk about. I was thinking maybe it's time to share how this whole situation affected me personally because what is the history of the nation if not a story of many individuals and the more voices we can send out into the world right now the better and the more wholesome will be our story together. On the morning of the war I woke up and I heard my partner speaking on the phone and I looked at him and he nodded and I knew that something horrible happened. We have been in a lot of tension, we had been in a lot of tension and we were in a way anticipating the attack but our minds, our rational minds were not ready to believe it. How could somebody in such an open and globalized world decide to attack people just... I don't even know the reason until now. What I do want to share is when you guys ask me if we are safe, I don't know. We are currently at this very moment rather safe. I haven't heard any bombs around my village yet. I know there have been sirens in town that is 20 kilometers away. But I'm not safe. I think about my family and friends every day. And with horror, I expect that somebody I love <clears throat> is going to die. I may be safe physically, but I'm not necessarily safe emotionally and mentally with horror on a daily basis. I wake up in the morning and I check in the chat if our parents are alive. And I have friends who haven't heard from their parents for days. And I have friends whose parents ran away from their apartment on the same day that a bomb hit their building. And I didn't know how to digest this story, but to share with you how my life was before the war and how it is now. So before the war, my partner and I chose to live here in this village where none of our family were born, but we came here and we fell in love with this place and we bought our home and in October we moved here. If you had followed me earlier, I know that you may have been interested in buying a house in countryside Ukraine. And I still believe that it will be possible after our victory. And I'm very proud of being Ukrainian and being united with the other 40 millions of Ukrainians and being supported and held by the whole world because Kyiv is the capital of freedom. So what has changed? We are still living in heaven 
There is beautiful nature behind my window. The wind is still blowing, the sun still goes up. I have never seen so many news in my life. Even though it was not the first war in Ukraine, we have been at war with Russia, undeclared by Russia for eight years now, when they took our territories, a part of Luhansk and Donetsk region and Crimea. And now I feel that I am in an emotional hell. And if there is any kind of hell, then it exists here on earth. It doesn't happen after death. I guess we come here to experience hell. And the biggest pain is not really for the fear of my own death, but it's the pain for the people I love. Which also wakes up the feeling of the impermanence of life, which has always been there, but sometimes we stick to this illusion that life is certain and we decide not to believe that things are going to change. Today I'm wearing traditional Ukrainian Vyshevanka. It's a very beautifully embroidered shirt and in my case it's a dress. And I'm also wearing a pair of earrings that I got from my mom and my mom got from my grandma. My grandma got from her mom and she got it from her mother-in-law. And I feel like there are all the women behind me holding my back. About two years ago, I wrote a book about this. It was a bunch of little stories written in letters to my future daughter about the past of our family and how horrible the Second World War was and how many losses we had all experienced and how life was gradually becoming better from our grandparents to our parents and to us and how in my generation I was so lucky and grateful to be able to visit anywhere in the world, to connect to people from different cultures, and that I hoped in her generation would be the time to spread love all over Ukraine. The message of the book was literally, Dear Love, that would be the name of my future daughter. It's time for you to love. It's the task of your generation. Look at the sufferings of our grandparents and please, please never repeat them. And today I'm standing on my land in Ukraine. And I know that I will have to rewrite this story for my daughter. And my biggest wish is that my daughter is born in the whole and free and flourishing and thriving and beautiful and democratic Ukraine, the country we have been building for more than 30 years. Ukrainians have been here for a long time protecting our freedom. One of the most horrible thoughts that I had as soon as the war started was that I was in a way grateful that all of our grandparents had passed away already because they wouldn't be able to bear this and I wouldn't want them to see this. My partner's grandpa died on Ukrainian Christmas on the 6th of January and he was our last grandparent. And I still cannot wrap my mind around it, but I'm grateful that he's not here. So this is how, because of illusions of somebody's mind and because of pleasing these illusions by a group of people, the whole world can turn from heaven into hell in just one minute, in just one moment. Can we say it was one moment? I think it's been going there for a while. You know, I was never too excited about being Ukrainian until in 2004 and 2013, there was a possibility that Ukraine would be taken away from me. And when you lose a part of your identity, this is where you understand how important it is for you. 
And that's why I know that Ukraine is going to win this war because millions of us were about to lose Ukraine multiple times and we know what it's worth. Growing up, I was reading a lot of Ukrainian literature and listening to songs and poetry and I honestly hated it. It was so heavy and it was always about our blood and somebody attacking us. And on the first day of war, I got it. I was thinking we were too stuck to our illusions of absence of safety in the world, but now I get it. It's our stories. We have to tell them through literature, through poems, through songs. So our children remember and so the world remembers. It's not the first war that Russia started against us, but we hope it's the last war and we are more united than ever and we are more confident than ever that we are going to win. So this is what I feel and I guess it may be enough for this video that I've been planning to record for 20 days. I guess it's a message to myself in the future just to remember the raw emotions and everything I was living today. Thank you so much for all of your love, donations, of all of the demonstrations you take part in and all the ways that you support Ukraine. When you support Ukraine, you don't just support Ukraine, you support the freedom of this world and our future. If you are looking for more ways on how you can support, please find the link under this video where I have compiled everything I knew about. And I really love you. I am really connected to everyone. Come to meditate. I have 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. meditations daily, Kyiv time, and it's in the links. And I'm grateful for you watching this and for all of your support. Slava Ukraini!